welcome to this short video on creating graphics, simple graphics, in R. First step, let's load up R, new script, go ahead and make that script window big. Big is the all outdoors. Now since we're going to uh, create graphics, we're going to have load in the data set first. It's going to be the data set that we've been using, stack grades read.csv again will be the most important command for reading in data. Um, if that does not look familiar, please go over uh, video 0 and 1a. And we're also going to create the GPA percent variable. If that doesn't look familiar, go back over one, uh, 0 and 1a. And we're going to source that set of functions. So I'm going to run those together. Control R double check that everything looks about right, the data's in, and those functions are loaded. Cool. So first let's start with the univariate categorical variables. There's basically two types of charts. One's the bar chart and the other is the uh, pie chart. So let's go ahead and start with the bar chart. In R the function is bar plot give it the table of the values. Ah, Bagosh and Bagora, there's an error. What did we forget to do? Object college not found. Oh, that's right. We either have to do SG dollar sign, because we're pulling college from the SG data set, SG dollar sign, or we're going to attach the SG data set. Let's go ahead and attach it. Here's the bar plot. Height, again, will be the frequency. Along the horizontal axis will be the, the levels of this categorical variable. Remember, the levels are business, College of Arts and Sciences, College of Agricultural Science and Natural Resources, College of Education, Undecideds, and others. So this is the syntax if we have raw data. If the data is already summarized for us, this would be the syntax bar plot, and then we give it the frequencies. And since it's several frequencies together, we got to enclose it in a C function. And then we got to specify the names. And again, enclose it in a C function because we're taking two values and we're trying to pass it off as a single variable. Female, male, heights, frequencies, etc. We could make this horizontal. Let's go back to the college one to make it horizontal. Or is equals true. Now it's horizontal. Notice that the labels are to the side, so you can either keep turning your head sideways or fix that. The fix is LAS equals 1. Don't ask me what LAS stands for. Either it's top secret or I just don't know. Now let's go ahead and look. Labels. I guess LAS could be for labels. Um, are now horizontal. It's helpful. So that's the bar plot. Pie chart is going to be very similar to the bar plot. In fact, so similar. I'm going to copy and paste and just change this to pie. There's our pie chart. So to get a bar chart, the function is bar plot. To get a pie chart, the function is pi. And using summarized data or pre-summarized data works the same way as it did with the bar plot. There we go. Now let's move on to um, uh, uh, this is, uh, quantitative variables, histogram, hist of grade, function to create a histogram is hist, there's the histogram. Now if we want to put a normal curve on top of that so that we're able to make some sort of guess as to whether the grade variable came from a normal distribution, 
It's not hist, it's norm overlay. And that's what it looks like. Histogram is prettied up a little bit. The blue curve is the normal curve. Okay, that was good. Box plots. We can get a box plot rather easily. Function is box plot. And a box plot of GPA would look like this. That's for all the students. If we want to divide it up instead of all the students together, we want to do it by gender. There we go. Females on the left, males on the right. If we want to do it by college. Notice most of this is done at the keyboard. Uh, copy, paste, and change. There it is by college. Looks like there is some difference. The other looks to be lower than most. Kasner looks to be higher than most. A lot of variation within CAS. We could also, instead of a histogram, we could also do a, a, a CDF curve. The function to get the CDF information is ECDF. But all that that does is gives us the data to calculate the CDF curve. In order to actually get the curve, we have to plot it. So it's plot of ECDF of grade. And there's the CDF curve for grade. This is what it looks like for GPA. Finally, let's look at the scatter plot. Scatter plot is a quantitative variable against a quantitative variable. Quantitative variables we've been using a lot of grade and GPA. Grade will be the dependent variable, the Y variable. That's a tilde. It's located to the left of the one key on your keyboard. GPA will be the independent variable the x variable. So the form will be y tilde x. And there's the gr uh, the uh, scatter plot. And it is what it is. If you want to color the dots according to gender, there's a couple ways of doing it. One, you can do it the all-in-one really confusing way. Notice grade tilde GPA is going to be the same. COL specifies color. Gender equals equals quote male end quote, and that's two equals there. It's a test for the gender if it's male. If gender is male for that person, then this will be a one or a true. And if gender is not male, this will be a zero or a false. If it's females, this will be zero. The color will be 0 plus 1 or 1, which is black. If it's male, this will be 1 plus 1, which is 2, which is also red. Did you follow that? Because I sure didn't. Here's what it looks like. It's kind of difficult to see. But I guess, the I, yeah, it's kind of difficult for me to see. Um, the open circles is what's doing it to me. So I'm going to make them closed circles or filled in dots. One way to do that is specifying the plotting character. PCH stands for plotting character. 16 is a really good one. 16 gives you that filled in dot. Now it's easier to see the reds and the blacks. Not entirely sure that this is a good way of doing it. In fact, let's see if we can figure out a better way of specifying the colors. Because if we do it this way, it's going to be very difficult to give colors other than red and black. So the function that's going to be very helpful is called the if-else function. Let's bring this up so we can see it completely. So here's the entire line. We're going to create a variable called colors. We could call this variable whatever we want. I'm calling it colors because colors mean something, specifically that I'm going to fill this with a bunch of colors. And for those people that are male, I'm going to use the color blue. 
And for those people that are not male, I'm going to give it pink. The if-else function takes three parameters. The first is a, it's a, a, a testing parameter. The second is the value if the test is true. And the third is the value if the test is false. So when we run this, we're going to have a vector of colors of blues and pinks, where the blues correspond to male students and the pinks correspond to female students. And now, with that, and that makes it a little bit easier for us to read and understand what's going on. I mean, seriously, this is really confusing this makes much more sense. And then we just plot it with the colors. And might as well do PCH equals 16. There we go. OK, the pink's hard to see, I guess. Now, if we can do that with the colors, we can also do it with the plotting characters, which may be helpful. And so that's what we do next. We've changed it from blue and pink to blue and dark red because the pink was pretty hard to see. And then we created the variable pchars, which is going to be the plotting characters. And again, we could have called this Tom for all, for all we care, but pchars means something to our brains. It's the if-else. Here's the testing statement. And here's the value if the testing statement is true. Here's the value if the testing statement is false. This corresponds to the male symbol. This corresponds to the female symbol. The slash u means that 2642 is a Unicode character code um, in decimal form. So we can, we can plot just about every single Unicode character out there, which is really handy. Of course, if we didn't want to do something as fancy as that, we could have done 16, which is that closed-in dot for males, and 14, which I believe is a square for females. It's not going to be as telling as the male and female symbols. And finally, notice the CEX. That CEX stands for character expansion. That makes, the, makes them bigger. So there's our plot. I don't need a legend because I know that this is a female symbol and this is a male symbol. I could make them a little bit bigger. Let's change the CEX to 2.6. Okay, maybe a little bit is an understatement. If I want to make them really, really, really small, I change it to something less than 1. So this will be 60% of base size. Yeah, that's not helpful. So what the CEX does, it makes the plotting characters larger or smaller. The slash U means the number that follows is the Unicode for whatever character you want. And then if else is a really easy way of filling in uh, plotting characters or colors or, or any sort of vector that you need to calculate based on some testing statement. And that's the end of this. This is the end of those uh, the really simple of how to do really simple graphics in R. Um, of course, you can tidy them up quite a bit. There are books on how to do graphics in R, but this will get us through the course. Hope this was helpful. Take care.